Hello and welcome to another Atipling Philosopher video with myself, Jonathan MSP. This is a frontline update for the 24th of December 2022, Christmas Eve. Uh, Merry Christmas to you all, and I hope things are comfortable for a couple of days for the troops fighting on the front line. Let's have a look at what has happened overnight. This is our map that, well, War Mapper has done a map, uh, I guess, because it's coming towards the end of the year, to show how much territory the Russians have lost to liberation uh, from their sort of peak control. It's all, it was interesting at the time to talk about their control sort of north of Kiev, uh, across the Sumy, and some maps had this as complete Russian control. But of course, what they did was really control the roads, and huge amounts of land in between those roads were not really controlled. There was no kind of Russian troop presence. They were just um, sitting along the major routes in the area. Uh, and that led some maps to be, you know, completely covering these kind of areas in colour. Um, but of course, yeah, that was not to be. But anyway, that that's that's the map, and things are looking different now. Um, we wonder how it's going to continue going on into the new year. Let's have a look at the troop, um, the official troop, and other loss figures from the Ukrainians. Uh, they say that 480 troops are slight downtick in troop losses for the Russians. That one tank, eight APCs, four artillery systems, and four MLRS. Four MLRS is uh, quite significant. Eight drones and five vehicles or fuel tanks. So not, uh, as I say, said yesterday in discussing the accuracy of these figures, I use these as indicative of as to whether it was a good or bad day for the Russians. Uh, and I'd say that was pretty mediocre, really, uh, on the light side for, for losses. Someone said that, you know, when you're comparing these figures to, so the top line, the total figures, to the total figures that Oryx produce as an, uh, probably the leading open source intelligence uh, source for lot for Russian mechanized equipment losses, what you have to remember is that most of these losses will be found in Ukrainian territory and therefore video and photographic footage will be taken. Um, but any losses that still remain within Russian territory are unlikely to be photographed by the Russians and put on social media. And therefore, there could well be a massive amount of... This is someone justifying that these figures are that much higher than Oryx. And it is a good point, is that if you're discounting most of the... Lo okay, you do get some drone footage and this and that, but m many of the losses behind Russian lines will not be included in these figures, arguably. Anyway. Just sort of throw that point in. Uh, what's happened overnight? Well, another massive fire, this time in the Moscow area, all Russian Institute of Light Alloys. A big warehouse caught fire, propane and acetyl gas cylinders insured. This is quite a spectacle for the locals, so another huge fire. There were other fires as well, but I don't think they were connected. One was a nursing home fire, which many people sadly died, but I don't think that's connected to the war at all. Um, this is alleged footage of Niz... Negorsky on occupied Crimea where a drone looks to have hit something uh, locals talk about an area of an oil depot so and there's other footage of the CCTV that's kind of the worst footage I've seen actually uh, so it looks like Crimea uh, an old de oil depot on Crimea has been hit by drones um, this has come from the Ukraine's general staff they confirmed two more big hits in Zaporizhia region on Wednesday destroying two artillery systems with ammunition more than 70 troops were wounded number of dead yet not yet known. So some again, this is what we hear all the time down in this sort of area behind the lines and in the Kherson Oblast as well. And Zaporizhia Oblast is here. Uh, Kherson is here. We hear of um, you know troop accumulations and strategic targets getting hit every single night. Um, so that's that one. Uh, moving on, the Russian Federation bought 1,700 Shahid 136 uh, drones from Iran, um, which have been delivered in tranches. About 540 have been delivered uh, and have, have been used, uh, as according to the chief of the main director of military intelligence of Ukraine, uh, Budanov. However, that leaves a good 1,200 yet to have been used. The implication is here is watch out. There will be many, many, many more drone attacks using these Shahid 136s. What I have noticed is that recently these drones have been shot out the sky with almost 100% accuracy. You know, it's a cruise missiles that are getting through, uh, but it seems like 
the Ukrainians have had much greater success in shooting down these Shahid drones. So they aren't as effective as they were when they initially hit the scene. Uh, and lastly, before we get to the front line, uh, reports that at least 492 draftees have died at training centers in Russia um, before getting anywhere near the front. In the video below, it's a disastrous assault by Russian Marines in uh, East uh, Ukraine. So, but I won't, I won't show you that. But that the 492 is interesting. We have had heard various reports on, you know, people dying at training, mobilized training centers, uh, and that number has accumulated, arguably, to 492, um, which is huge and just uh, reflective of the poor conditions and, well, the poor conditions of the training facilities, the poor can the poor training. Uh, but arguably the poor condition of the people being mobilized. So a lot of people are being mobilized who have underlying health conditions, who are just unfit, being thrown into these um, mobilize, in, into mobilization and then end up, you know, passing away. So there you go. Anyway, let's get on to the front line. As we go to the front lines, it's worth uh, mentioning that, that there has been some shelling uh, along the borders. In fact, some incursions that uh, could indicate... I don't know, reconnaissance around these sort of areas. Now, the Institute for the Study of War again has talked about uh, this idea of NDCOA. So that's the most dangerous course of action. Talking about how Russia are continuing uh, with Belarus, actually, to, continuing to put things in place to indicate that they are interested in this NCDO, uh, NDCOA, uh, which is a, an incursion from the north somewhere. Whether this will be from Belarus down into this region of Ukraine, highly unlikely. It's very marshy around there. They'll need uh, there are rivers. They'll need bridge building equipment, all sorts, of, and it's heavily mined. It's more likely to be an incursion, possibly down uh, through Sunni, maybe Chernihiv again, or or even more likely around Kharkiv, maybe an offensive in the northwest of of Ukraine. Now, uh, there's quite a lot of analysis on this in the ISW worth taking a look at. Um, it, it, as it says here, it could be that they are setting up an information space, it could be deception, uh, so they strike somewhere else. Uh, there's all sorts of options here, but they, they are continuing to do things that would indicate um, that it's a possibility up there. Uh, and that, of course, just the, that just that being a possibility then leaves the Ukrainians thinking, well, how do we manage that? And I, I guess the idea would be that they are keeping, you know, troops and resources fixed into these positions all along here. Uh, and that might allow Russia to then strike somewhere else or they genuinely are going to come down and attack from the north. Um, just in this, the ISW seem to say that you know, both options are open, even though they think it's less likely that they are attacked from the north and more likely to attack um, in the, in this northwestern region. As the ISW continues, Russian forces likely conducted at least two reconnaissance and force missions in northern and northeastern Ukraine on uh, December the 26th. Sorry, I was saying northwest all the time. I meant northeast. All the time I said northwest, I meant northeast. Sorry, oh, stupid compass. Um, the Ukrainian general staff reported the Ukrainian forces repelled Russian attacks in uh, Versoke in Sumy Oblast and Khatna in Kharkiv Oblast, um, about eight kilometers from the international border. Uh, Sumy Oblast military administration head uh, reported that Ukrainian territorial defense forces destroyed a Russian sabotage and reconnaissance group in Vy uh, Versoke. Um, Russian reconnaissance of Ukraine's northern border advances both a Russian information operation designed to convince Ukraine and the West uh, that Russian forces will attack northern Ukraine as well as preparations for an actual operation. Again, it's that kind of like, what what's it going to be? Uh, so uh, as we come down to the uh, front line and we'll go straight to our northeastern <laughs> northeastern area, which is this Kupiansk down to Svatova to Kremina. There has been actually a, a number of claims concerning uh, here that might be worth just uh, dwelling on a little bit. So up in the area just to the north of Kupiansk or northeast of Kupiansk, you've got the Dvorichna, uh, Tavozhanka axis going on here or the Limanpershi-Tavozhanka axis and the Russians rebar 
on Telegram have said Ukrainian units once again shelled the border areas in the Belgorod region. The village of Nova Novaya Tavajanka uh, came under attack. Russian artillery returned fire at the, uh, at the spotted uh, AFU firing positions. Uh, intense fighting during the past several days near Dvorichna Diver- Diver- finally turned into a positional phase. And then it says Russian troops suspended their offensive and are consolidating their positions, which is to say that um, they aren't on the attack and possibly on the, the defensive. Uh, the Ukrainians could be pushing uh, in Tavoljanka. I haven't really heard any information in the last 24 hours of what the Ukrainians are doing around there. I've heard a lot more down here, which is to say uh, there are claims that Kuzumivka has been liberated by the Ukrainians. Uh, I think this is unlikely. There are claims that Kolomichika uh, has been liberated by the Ukrainians, possible, and claims that the Ukrainians are in Pidkuychansk. Um, so there are various things going on there. Let's have a look at that. So Michael McKay here says, um, the Russians deplete their infantry reserves in futile attacks. The Ukrainians counterattack with the position and make small advances. In the past day, the Russian occupiers lost control of the settlements of Kuzumivka and Kolomachika um, in the direction of Svatova, Luhansk region. Now, whether that means that the Ukrainians control them or whether the Russians have lost control and therefore their grey zones is, is up for debate. Um, but that is that is one claim there. Defmon says uh, GSUA, so the general staff, uh, reported two new shelling locations today in the area of Kuzumivka and Kolomuychika. Um, I believe the Ukrainians have advanced north of Kuzumivka and possibly crossed the P-07. There are telegram reports of Ukrainians fighting in Kolomuychika, and I've even seen liberation claims. And he says later, as usual, I would like to see evidence supporting any claim of liberation. Um, Sofiv- Sofivka and Kolomuychika. So we go back to the map. That, that it, so he's saying there are claims about uh, Kolomuychika. And also, if we go up north to so- Sofivka here, I'm not changing my map. But I am saying that, you know, watch out for all around here because it looks like the Ukrainians are actually making some advances uh, around here. That If these aren't um, under the control of the Ukrainians, then there's every chance that the Russian lines could now look something like this. Um, and they are now sort of behind this line of settlements. Uh, and if that's the case, that is that is really good news for Ukrainians. And this highway here, they are have they have good purchase along this highway. Um, I, I'm I'm going to keep a, keep an eye on this kind of area. Um, Andrew Perpetua says, on the other hand, I see absolutely no evidence to show Ukraine is in Kuzumivka or that Russia is shelling Kuzumivka. And I have no idea why Ukraine said Russia shelled there today. It simply isn't true. Ukraine is shelling it though. Uh, which is interesting. So he's saying the Ukraine are shelling these areas, um, and there you go. So he, uh, um, yeah, it just differing uh, claims going on uh, in the area. So no report says the AFU has active presence in Novosiliska again. Russia shelled it heavily. There are rumours that the Ukrainians entered Pidkuychansk. Uh, this was reported some days ago, needs confirmation and fighting inside Kolomuchika confirmed Russia shelled it today. So uh, I think what we can probably say is that actually this, that we've probably got a grey zone there and this could include Kuzumivka as well. So where they the Ukrainians had retreated out of Novosilivska here, uh, it appears that maybe they have some kind of foothold in there and that this there is just fighting going on. Possibly no one controls any of these areas. They are just uh, fiercely contested. But that could also include Sofivka. So there's a there there is the odd claim of that as well. So anyway, that's what's going on there. If we look um, to other claims of further down towards Kremna, uh, let's go there now. And just. Before we come down south, uh, the ISW says that uh, Ukrainian forces may be in Kolomichika as well. So they are kind of hedging their bets uh, as well, just not 100% sure. Um, 
as we come further down south, it's, you know, Stan Makivka plus Chanka, Chavona Papivka. Um, the ISW assesses that Ukrainian forces are likely in Chavona Papivka, despite the lack of visual evidence of Chavona Papivka's liberation. Uh, so that's fairly interesting. But it's just the usual sort of fighting going on, uh, plus Chanka, Chavona Papivka, um, and then Makivka over here. So Ukrainian forces... Uh, there's visual confirmation that they're definitely in Makivka, but it seems that that's a sort of staging post for attacking elsewhere. So the reinforcements sort of seem to go there for going elsewhere. Then it's sort of Dubrova um, towards Kremina. Lots of claims about uh, Dubrova um, and uh, the Ukrainians, you know, making inroads into uh, in towards Kremina. Um, as you can see from Reba here fighting for holding the initiative for near plus Shanka continues at the Svato Kremlin line. Basically, as you can see, they they say very little. Russian armed forces are launching complex strikes. Of course, they are on the positions of Ukrainian formations, eliminating the enemy's personnel. Uh, but of course, no sort of detail, no place names, nothing uh, of importance. So, uh, no report says Russia again shelled Dubrova. That indicates that Ukrainians are there. Um, in occupied Pravilia evacuation of civilians was reported so this is uh, interesting because that is right here right on the sort of edge of the forest just sort of southeast of Kremina um, if they are evacuating civilians from there then it looks like there could be uh, some sort of shaping up for Ukrainian attacks around this area anyway let's uh, go further down south uh, through Bilirivka and on towards Bakhmut as we come down south past Bilirivka, not really sure of what's going on in Bilirivka, but I'm changing my map uh, concerning Verkonokomayanska. Uh, it seems like the Russians have pushed the Ukrainians back a little bit around here. Uh, this is mainly from sort of Defmon, uh, Defmon's maps, um, but it, it could it could be otherwise. I uh, just not too much information out of here. Those claims that perhaps there's a sort of little town called Novoselivka here that the Russians were attacking towards there, but uh, because there are so many places with the same 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 names, uh, Defmon's unsure whether that is a Novoselivka in Donetsk that they're attacking towards because there are quite a few of them. Um, so it's one that he says is the best bet, but who knows? Um, but it could be that uh, there's been some advances for the for the Russians around this area, as he mentions there. That's what he says. And then really we move on down towards Bakhmut. Um, uh, just trying to see if there's anything from uh, Riba up in this area. Not really. So uh, Suryak Maps talks about if we come down past Spirinet, uh, past Berestova to this southern Bilirivka and Yakolivka, there are some claims that the Russians have pushed further out around here. Um, so we can, it would look like this according to some other mappers that, that, that it seems that they've cleared some area to the sort of northerly direction of Yakolivka as they're working their way out of there. Um, and I remember I've been talking about how, uh, this is the perfect place to attack north of Vaseli, uh, across here to Krasnopolivka, uh, and then down south to flank Solidar and northern Bakhmut. Um, but we shall see. Um, so Syriac uh, says here, map corrections uh, were made some kilometers south. Uh, that's in Kudimivka, sorry. Um, I thought that was Yakolivka, but it was another map that did that. So uh, Defmon says, Bakhmut, uh, the, uh, the Ukrainians repulse attacks around Yakolivka, Bakhmutska and Bakhmut. I think Opitny is still contested. Um, no report says no map changes. Situation is tense south of Klischivka. Uh, Russian forces are pushing there, trying to fight a way to Ivanivska. Defense holds for now, fighting ongoing in Bilirivka. South of Opitny, there are clashes. So no like, huge details, but we'll have a look at this area uh, fighting around Klischivka towards Ivanivska. Um, and we'll go and have a little look at to see what the ISW have to say. So as we uh, come down to Bakhmut, you look at ISW and a few other sources saying that U Ukrainians have repelled 
the Russians back to this industrial zone. And we saw, I showed you footage yesterday of this industrial zone getting hit with some pretty substantial ordnance or there's some pretty substantial explosions. Uh, so I'm happy to call this entire area a grey zone. I don't think the Russians will have particular, um, they won't have control over this area. I don't think they'll have much presence there. I'm, I'm interested in this, whether there are some reports that the Russians have been pushed out of this aggregates area in this rubbish uh, tip. Uh, that's just there, just to the south of the waste sorting plant. I imagine they probably have been, but I'd like some sort of confirmation on that. Uh, it, it's interesting how you still get some Russian sources. So this is Syriac maps that I accidentally sort of showed you a little bit earlier. So this is a few changes in Bakhmut front during the last days, which is just completely wrong. There have been loads of changes. This is uh, December the 23rd, so this is last night. Um, Russian army and DPR forces took control over some blocks at Vatutina Street in Zabakhmutka district. And this is their map. Now, uh, just this is absolute nonsense. I mean, they're, they're, pretty much everyone agrees that they've been pushed back here. Um, but this is a pro pro Russian source, so you know what do you expect? Uh, but even um, ISW, so even I Igor Gherkin has stated uh, on December the twenty second, that's two days ago, that Ukrainian forces drove Wagner Group forces in Bakhmut out of positions they occupied several days ago and back to the eastern industrial zone. So just uh, yeah, it's complete nonsense there. Um, anyway, just so I'd show you the other side of the story. Um, uh, if we if we look at what Rebel says, so Rebel says uh, Ukrainian command managed to slightly slow down the pace of the advance of Russian forces in and near Bakhmut. So this is, you know, kicking them out of this entire area is just slowing down their um, their their advances. Uh, nevertheless, heavy street fighting continues in the town and also in Opitny Pidorodna and Klishchivka. Um, again, you know, take that with a pinch of salt. Um, now, this is what Syriac also says. Map corrections uh, were made some kilometers south where Russian army and DPR forces advanced from Kurdyamivka around Water Channel uh, during the last days. Uh, and I'll show you this in a second. So they think they've uh, advanced from Kurdyamivka there. Um, right, let's let's have a look at all of this. So as we come down south, uh, again, Opitny fighting, grey zone to the south of that. Now, Klishchivka, there are some claims from Russians that they have entered the east of Klishchivka, so that either could be this entire sort of eastern front or it could be this kind of northeast here in an attempt to move towards Ivanivska. So what the Ukrainian, the Russians would, would love to do, obviously, is, um, you know, advance up to Ivanivska to get some kind of close encirclement of Bakhmut. Klishchivka is so important for holding back the Russians all along here. In fact, you know, it's not just there, it's Opitny. Opitny and Klishchivka uh, act as some kind of, um, oh, goodness me. Do you know what? There's so much I would change about how Google Maps operates. Uh, that is definitely one of them. Oh, gee whiz. Right. Uh, so uh, what I was merely trying to say is this is pointless now. You probably got my idea. Um the idea is that Opitny and Klishchivka together uh, create this kind of barrier for the Russians to push through. Uh, so they have to then go round. And then, of course, that leaves, uh, you know, Kodyumivka and defences behind Kodyumivka to try and stop the Russians from coming around there. Now, what Syriac maps, uh, mapping was saying is that the, um, the Russians have control over this kind of area here. And they have this kind of triangle, which I was talking about yesterday, which I think, you know, people like Defmon have said they've lost and they've been pushed back to the canal here. Um, so if we go back to that Syriac map, you can see that, that he, he thinks they've got some territory to the west of the canal and going further north. It's just a matter of meters. I'm not changing my map um, just on the basis of that. But there is heavy fighting, I think, around here and around Klischivka. So I think... Klischivka is one to watch over the next few days uh, to see whether the, the Russians can find a weakness there, considering they've seemed to have been beaten back from the eastern outskirts 
um, and obviously Peter Rodner as well. So that that's what's going on around there. The ICW reports again, just a couple of days behind about the loss of this trench network. And uh, as I said, I've seen Ukraine is clearing that out, right? And and just turning over dead bodies and stuff, pretty horrible. Um, but this is definitely, uh, you could indeed actually move the Ukrainian uh, control lines forward because you know they are there they have presence there for sure um but uh you know for what it's worth um okay let's move on south uh past Mayorsk and on to Avdivka once I can get my map sorted out apologies now what is evident is that there's just very little news coming out of anywhere around here you know you, you get talk about positional attacks in New York and so on and so forth. Avdivka in the ISW used to get a couple of paragraphs. This is the entirety of Avdivka and and further. So the Ukrainian general staff reported that Ukrainian forces repelled Russian attacks on Vodyanye, Krasnoharivka and Marienka. That's it. Like none of this is to do with that below there. That is literally what the ISW, which normally has several paragraphs on each of these, says about this entire area of Divka, Krasnoharivka and Marienka. So I, I'm wondering whether things are actually genuinely slowing down for Christmas, whether there is just a, this unwritten rule that, hey, we're not going to attack each other because Christmas is coming. Let's kind of like take a break. You know, look at Riba says uh, nothing. So this this is the end of the Bakhmut stuff. And then you move on. And actually, it's going on to other places, talking about um, GMLRS attacks, uh, Crimea, Odessa, Zaporizhia, uh, uh, you know, uh, talking about terrorist attacks and from the, from the uh, Ukrainian missiles and whatnot but no talks about positional fighting or anything um and you've got no reports saying if you got ambushed near pavlivka and lost some equipment and personnel uh, so that's interesting uh marienka is mostly artillery right now fighting is ongoing but less intense than last week's and uh, in pervomyski and avdivka positional battles on the outskirts and that's that that, that and that, that's pretty much that for the rest of the front line really uh you know if we go to i mean there's some interesting stuff here that ISW talk about. So Russian naval infantry elements continue to operate in Western Donetsk or Blast. Uh, geolocated combat footage posted on December 22nd shows Ukrainian forces repelling Russian naval infantry elements west of Neskuchna. Um, uh, footage from mid to late December documents elements of the Pacific Fleet's 40th Naval in Infantry Brigade operating in the Vukladar area. So it's just talking about how, you know, these half decent sort of troops are operating and they were pushed uh, out of Neskuchna which is here um so that that hasn't been mentioned for a week or so but there was intense fighting there sort of week week and a half ago i think it was um but other than that that's pretty much that we've got uh shelling and stuff sort of going on i, I know that uh, Ochi, uh Ochi keeps keep, keeps getting hit um this is uh, a sort of naval base uh, where the training goes on, but also it's it's the springboard across to the Kimburn Peninsula. So the Russians are often hitting that with artillery and whatnot. Um, unsure exactly what's going on on the peninsula. Um, and let's have a, a quick little look and see if there's anything in uh, Zaporizhia and Kherson worth uh, mentioning. So the usual shelling uh, around the Kherson area. Tokmak, I talked talk to you about this yesterday uh, in my extra video. Tokmak, which is a very important logistical hub for the Russians. A railway goes through there and lots of roads. It's northeast of Melitopol. Uh, there is reports that the Russians have built trenches around the entire perimeter of the city or the town. So they are obviously expecting that to be attacked at some point to the, to the point that they have built extensive trench networks right around the perimeter um uh, not a lot else really to to report other than uh the um you know usual kind of hits from from the odd uh base here on the odd base here and there that the uh, Ukraine, uh russians are building up their defensive operations in, in and around the Kherson and then down into crimea but yeah, it just seems to be rather quiet compared to what it was even just a couple of days ago. So anyway, there you go. There's the frontline update for you. Uh, I've have a pre-recorded. I did one yesterday. Uh, uh, 
extra video, Ukraine War extra video for you to get your teeth into later. In the meantime, look, Merry Christmas. Uh, I don't know what will happen on Christmas Day. I doubt I'll be able to put one out, but you never know. Um, and please like, subscribe, share, do all those normal things you do. Uh, you can check out my books in the description below. Uh, grab some copies of, of, of something you fancy reading um, or, or grab some copies of anything you don't fancy reading. Just grab some copies. Um, uh, but no, thank you so much. Take care and thanks for being on this journey with me. Really appreciate that. Um, and see you on the other side. Merry Christmas, everyone, and raise a glass to those fighting on the front line on both sides in in kind of memory of how difficult it is. I say this in my extra later, but, you know, there's a lot of Russian troops dying on the front line that don't want to be there, that are forced to be there. There are a lot that might want to be there as well, but, uh, you know, there are humans dying up and down this front line on both sides, and it's just a, a terrible human tragedy. So, you know, raise a glass uh, and think of those who are less fortunate than yourselves this Christmas. Toodle pips. See you later.